Hi, everyone. I am back from camping and had a great time. I was way up north, norther than where I am, and it was beautiful. We did have one night we had the possibility to see auroras. It just wasn't strong enough at the right time. So we didn't get a chance to do that, but it was a ton of hiking and a lot of outdoor stuff, camping, campfires, all the things. I tried two levels of camping because I have one of those roof tents that makes camping so easy, but I decided to try car camping and regular tent camping. Do I really need to have a roof tent? Well, anyway, I love the roof tent and I don't plan on getting rid of that anytime soon. But how did the camping go? Well, first of all, I lost 1.6 pounds, which over the course of two weeks, not that great. I have a feeling that that's going to work its way out of the system. When I got back from camping, I immediately weighed myself the next morning and I was down like three pounds. And I thought, ooh, I did really well. And then the next day, I stepped on the scale again and I went back up two pounds. And I went, ooh, well, and I lost two of the three pounds. But 1.6 over the course of two weeks, I think that may change. Um, I noticed that when I traveled for work or when I go on vacation or when I go camping, it takes a couple of days for your body to get used to whatever it is you did. Like if you travel for work, you're on an airplane, you're sitting for long periods of time, you're in the office, you're in meetings long time. And so your body is different than when you're at at home, when you have full control over your life. And it took two, three days, maybe four to sort of work its way out. But the camping was good, and my friend and I uh, ate pretty well. She is also trying to lose weight. She's not on any drug, and she's doing a great job. She looked great. And I know it's one of those things that when you get to the final, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds, it's just a beast to lose. And I guess to me, I'm looking forward to being in that position where I'm trying to lose and be aggravated by the last 10 to 15 pounds. But God, I got 100 pounds to go. So it's okay. We'll get there. And some things I noticed with it is, first of all, we ate uh, yogurt, cottage cheese for breakfast. My friend kind of did her thing, and then I had uh, that. Sometimes I had eggs for breakfast. I think eggs is on chilly mornings is one of those kind of hearty things that makes you feel like it sticks with you throughout the day. I was a little bit worried that with the amount of hiking we were going to do, I would tank out. I would just run out. I mean, I probably ate a thousand more calories the last time we went camping. And so I had some concerns that I was just going to start deteriorating on energy. The first two days we were in a campground that had no internet and had very steep and I would say dangerous hikes. The one hike was one that we did back in April and I was better at it. I, I have to say, you know, my breathing was easier. I was able to truck up hills a lot easier. So that part was really good. I was more fit. I was more energetic at that point. And my breathing was much better. I have asthma. And so usually I have struggles. She says, and I don't know if it's true, but we went on a 109-mile hike in England. And she said all the wheezing I did while we were on that hike inspired her to become a respiratory therapist. So she noticed that my wheezing was a lot better. And, you know, 20 pounds, if you try to carry around a 20-pound weight, it's heavy. And if you got that on your body and you're trucking up hills with it, it weighs on you, uh, literally. So it was better. But then we ended up doing some more hiking and I did lose energy. And I was kind of, I guess, disappointed at some point that I thought it'd be better. You know, I thought I would get more energized. I thought I would get better. I would go up those hills like a, like a beast and, and be good at that. But, you know... I'm still hauling around a lot of extra weight, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get there. It, it will get there, but at least I did it. At least I tried, and um, some of that hike was really hazardous. Some of it, we were just in the weeds. I <laughs> probably got ticks, and some of it was trees falling down into very narrow paths where we had to actually scramble down the hill and climb back up with poles and grabbing onto trees. And so it was, it was very rough hiking. But then we ended up on the second half of the, of the camping trip, ended up going to another state park, which everything was fairly flat. The hikes were very easy. We always end up there because it's quicker for her to go home and for me to go home. And it's just relaxing. It's a very relaxing uh, state park. So the camping itself was very good. But like I said, I sort of felt disappointed in myself that I wasn't more energetic or didn't take the hills as best I thought I could. 
But you know what? I got a long winter. I live in the North Woods. We're going to have a winter. And by the time spring rolls around, I should be at a really good weight. I should be at the weight that I was when I lost weight the first time and then got injured and then put it back on. So I'm very excited about the spring weight I will have if I keep going and I keep motivating. And that image is in my head. But the rest is going well. I noticed that the drug does not work as well. I think this is what happens when people feel like they've adapted to it. And it's nothing bad. My blood sugar is still good. My, I think, metabolic syndrome, I, I'm still losing weight. So I think that's one of the signs when a doctor sees that you're no longer losing weight, that's when they really want to move you up to the next dose. But food noise, a little temptation, a little eat something good, have this, have that, eat too much. I feel like it's training wheels. I feel like it's something that I can combat and I should try to combat because like I said, at some point, maybe this drug will go away for me. At some point, maybe it loses its effectiveness. So the best that I can be on this drug and just try a little on my own to fight off those messages and to fight off that temptation and learn how to eat properly, maybe for the first time in my life, the better off I think I'm going to be. So we're going to hang on to five milligrams for a little bit more. And we'll see. You know, I, I, I believe in being flexible and that's where we're going to go. But I was thinking about this while I was hiking and I read a couple of articles. One, I read an article and saw a video of a woman who lost a bunch of weight and she wasn't done yet. But it was interesting when she talked about other goals. Like she didn't realize how much her weight was preventing her from having the life she wanted. Now that she's lost a bunch of weight, she's going on amazing hikes. She's going to various places. She can fit on the airplanes much more. Her life is opening up. And that's the thing I noticed too when I lost weight the first time is my life started opening up to new adventures. I started trail running. You know, my whole life I've never run. I joked to my friend from high school. I said, if you had probably asked, you know, in a yearbook thing, will Jill get addicted to crack cocaine or will she become a trail runner? She probably would have picked the other one because the thought of me voluntarily running was outside of any imagination. But I ended up loving it. And I, I feel like I weigh too much still now to do that. I think it's going to be too much impact on my ankles and my calves. I think that probably is part of what led to me getting injured was I went too fast and probably still weighed a little too much with the amount of running I was doing. But I loved it. And I can't wait to get back. So spring, we're going to work hard this winter and we're going to get to spring so we can go have those adventures. But she felt like her life was opening back up to her. And then there was another TikTok video that my friend uh, Allison showed me where a woman who also was from the Upper Peninsula, Michigan, I'll try to put the links in the show notes for this video, but she just started living her life. I don't know if she's trying to diet. I, I don't know her very well. I didn't watch many of her videos, but it was inspiring that she just decided she was going to start living the life she wanted to live. And so she is out there hiking, paddle boarding, traveling the world, seeing all the sights and not letting her weight stop her. Now, I think both things are great. I think it's great she's living her life. She should live her life. In fact, most of my life, I've been greatly overweight. And I realized that same kind of thing at some point. You have to live your life. You have to go to the places you want to go. And if you wait for that perfect time, if you work for that magical time when you weigh this particular weight and you're going to take full advantage of it, it might never come. So you should live your life. You should not wait on that. But then this other woman is also inspiring because now she has lost a lot of weight and more opportunities are open to her. And that's what really happened to me the last time. And that is what I'm looking forward again to getting to that weight again in spring. I want those life opportunities. Some of the things I did while I was at the low weight, I ran, I started trail running. I ran the levee in New Orleans. I went hiking in the Ozarks. I went on that hundred mile hike in England. I surfed in Hawaii. The funny story about the surfing in Hawaii was I was seeing my trainer. She got me into shape. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go surfing in Hawaii because I had to go to Hawaii. I know you feel sad for me. For work, I had to go in January, February, and March, three trips to Hawaii to implement software. And I said, you know what? I'm going to surf. 
absolutely going to try it. At least try it. And then on the plane there, I said, are you nuts? You can't go surfing. You don't know a thing about this. You cannot go surfing. So I talked myself out of it. And then the very last movie I watched on the airplane was The Life of Walter Mitty. And if you haven't seen that movie, I really liked it. But the whole point of the movie was this guy who was not living his life. He was living vicariously through other people's photographs, their adventures, because he worked for Life magazine. And so he would get pictures of other people's adventures. And that's how he sort of experienced the world. And because of a bunch of mishaps, he ended up having to follow one of these adventures around the world to find him and started having his own adventures. And I'm like, well, now after I watch this movie about this guy having adventures in his life and taking on challenges, now I have to go surfing. So I did. I found a place that gave you a two-hour lesson for, and it ended up being not being terribly expensive and they do everything for you so they help you paddle out because that is really the hard work of it is to take a paddle board and paddle out and if you're not used to ocean swimming ocean swimming is a whole other swimming i am pretty good at swimming i have done lake swimming i have done pool swimming ocean swimming is a whole other beast so they don't want you drowning and things like that they help take you out to where you're going to surf you kind of lie on the board so now you're sort of doing a low plank. <laughs> they tell you to go, go, go. And that's when you start paddling, paddling, paddling. Then you push up. Then you do a lunge. And then you stand and you balance. It is using every muscle I think I've ever had in my body. And for two hours I did it. I got up about uh, 10 times. And he said it was really good. He said some people never get that rhythm where they can stand up and, and sail in. And I got to sail in about 10 times. And it was thrilling and it was exhausting. And I remember I got done with the uh, class and I just sat on the beach exhausted. It was the most exhausting thing I ever did at the most fit period of my life. But then it's funny because they come up to you and say, oh, by the way, we've been taking pictures of you surfing for $40. You can buy the whole roll of all the pictures, you falling in, you succeeding, you can have the whole lot. And of course I did. For $40 to have pictures of me on a surfboard? Absolutely. But it's a memory I'll never give up. And so you realize that by losing weight and by getting your goals, a whole new world opens up to you. Absolutely. Have adventures. But also know that when you start gaining your goals, including weight loss and getting more fit and getting more healthy, you start getting more goals to have. Things that you never thought you could do, like a 100-mile hike in England, like surfing like running 10 miles. I never thought I could do any of that, and I did all of that. And that's what I'm looking forward to this spring, of being back at that weight where I can start seeing those particular goals come true. So I think my advice to you, or what I challenge you to do, is think about other goals. I mean, some people want to get into fabulous dresses. That's not kind of my thing. I'm not much of a clothes person. But other people want to do adventures. That's me. I want to do adventures. Or other people, they want to be able to play with their kids. I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but I watched a YouTube channel where this guy had a YouTube channel and he started being able to play with his kids for the first time. This man, who I don't think was used to weeping, started talking about how he got to go and play with his kids for the first time. And then he started going camping with his wife and his kid. And you could tell it, it warmed him because he found something he was not able to do before. And now he can do. And his whole life opened up. So I want you to think about that. If you were to get this goal of weight loss, if you were to be able to get down, whether you're taking Monjero or not taking Monjero, can you go out and start thinking about the things you really want that maybe this weight is holding you back on. Maybe you have health conditions, knee problems, heart problems. And if you lost this weight, you could start seeing some of those dreams come true. And for me, you know, I still have some worries that maybe my knees are going to be trashed by the time I get done with it. I mean, it's had a good number of years of weighing too much on these knees. Are they going to be okay when I'm done? But I'm willing to bite this out and see how my knees are when I get done. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening. Don't forget, I have a podcast called Start With Small Steps. It's about incremental goals. I'm going to start using this channel to 
produce other videos about small steps in other areas. Next week, I'll talk a little bit too about what was the final straw and why I decided to take this drug. I hope you have a great week. And remember, you can always email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com or message me right here on YouTube. So please subscribe, tell a friend, and let me know how you're doing on your challenges and goals, whether they involve Manjaro, weight loss, or anything like that. Thanks.